So in our discussion of the Holstrom diagram, we've been talking about some of the coarser grains, the sand-sized grains, granules, pebbles, and cobbles. Right? And in for all of those grains, we go from deposition to transport as you increase the flow speed, you increase the size of grains that can get deposited. Right? And the same thing is true uh, in terms of deposition for the finer grains. Um, if you have a flow of something like uh, 20 centimeters or 2 centimeters per second here, uh, you'll be transporting uh, silt sized grains and they will continue to be transported until the flow actually gets all the way down here at, at something like uh, 0.15 uh, centimeters per second. Um, so we have this general relationship that as a flow flows down, as a flow slows down, you get deposition of the coarser grains, and then the finer grains require a much lower flow. Um, the erosion uh, line is a little bit different. When you have the sand, you can erode grains. Um, and as the flow speed gets higher, you erode coarser grains. But there's this interesting relationship when you get down into clay and silt sized grains, which are collectively called um, mud as well, in that the behavior of the mud changes because of the very high surface area uh, to the volume. And what happens is that you end up uh, getting uh, the grains um, sticking uh, to each other. And that makes it much harder to erode these fine grain sizes. So we know this from experience. If we step on wet sand, it tends, maybe a few grains stick to your shoes. But if you actually step in wet mud, you can get big chunks of that mud sticking to your shoes. And that's because um, of the, the high surface area um, compared to the uh, uh, volume. And also because a lot of these fine grains like clay minerals have uh, charged surfaces. And um, they can, if there are um, some cations in the water, uh, they can actually help the minerals adhere to each other. So if we look at this diagram, what happens is that very fine sand, um, there's not, to fine sand, there's not much variation in the flow speed that it takes to um, erode those grains. There is a big uh, change in the flow speed to deposit them if the, those grains are already moving. When we start getting to finer grains, that effect of the stickiness of the area increases. And so a flow, even a flow at 100 centimeters per second, will not erode consolidated clay. Right? It'll flow over the top of it uh, instead. Even though if we follow this line over, that same flow can erode pebbles. Okay. So what this means is that if you have, for example, consolidated clay layer here, you could actually get sand and pebbles transported across the top without eroding that clay. Okay. So this is, this is, there's this really uh, interesting relationship that sometimes you can see very coarse grains sitting on top of clay. But one of the key aspects is it needs to be consolidated. When mud first settles out of suspension um, and it gets deposited down here, it's, it's sometimes 75% uh, water. Uh, plus the mineral uh, grains. And if you have that much water in uh, between the grains, um, you end up with unconsolidated mud 
and that is actually much easier uh, to erode. The water keeps the surfaces of the minerals um, from adhering to each other as much. So if, you, if the mud has just recently been deposited, it's easier to erode than if it has lost water and uh, become consolidated. Thanks for watching.